to Brown Girl Talk. So today's topic is continued on Marilyn Monroe, suicide or murder. Of course, as you guys know that this is a very complicated case, so it's going to take a lot of time to untangle it. I have gotten some more information for you guys. Before we start on that, I'm going to let you guys know that obviously since this is a very tough case, um, I'm going to need more time to look into this uh, case. And so because of that, um, obviously we already know that there's going to be more than like two videos. I've estimated that there might be around like five or six videos on this topic alone. So please bear with me and I hope you guys will enjoy the video. I also wanted to add that since I have to work on this case a lot, it's going to take a lot of time. So because of that, I'm not going to be posting any every Friday from now on. I'm going to be posting every second Friday. Anyway, so let's get started on the video. We left off at um, how I think that the housekeeper killed her. Um, obviously, it was kind of fishy because she kept changing her statements over and over again. So I was like, what the hell? Like, why is she doing that? And um, it's kind of odd that she kept changing her statements over and over again. And then she doesn't even remember like much of the details about why they didn't call the cops. Um, I was watching a lot of the documentaries, obviously because I had to, because I was like, um, it's a really big case. But anyways, um, yeah, so I was watching a couple of the videos and um, when the housekeeper, when she was questioned, um, she states that she doesn't remember why her and Greenston didn't call the cops right away and uh, it didn't add up. Because on August 5th, 1962, the headquarters of the LA department was called at 4.25 in the morning. They were not called at like 3.30 or 3.35 even. Um, they weren't called for at least a good 45 minutes to an hour. Um, so obviously there was definitely something that they were trying to cover up in between that time because I don't know what else to conclude um, but yeah like obviously if you guys had that much time of a gap in between before calling the cops I would say that they obviously had something that they needed to do to cover up and make it look like it was suicide however um, anyways I'm gonna jump into the details that I caught from Capel's book of the strange death of Marilyn Monroe so Pat Newcomb was a close friend of Monroe's and she claimed that Monroe was happy on August 4th and that they had spoken around 6.30. Monroe said she'd see her tomorrow. However, Greenson claims that Monroe seemed distraught and that he told her to relax or go for a drive even. And this was around like 5.30 on the Saturday evening when uh, Monroe called him. On the other hand, um, even the housekeeper, when I was watching the documentary, she said that uh, Monroe wasn't feeling, you know, energetic or anything. She was actually pretty low, um, according to the housekeeper. So I don't know. I I just I can't really conclude anything because it's there's not really much to conclude there. Um, but yeah. Um, anyways, continuing on. Um, I know I didn't talk about her early life, so I'm gonna get into that right now. So Monroe was basically raised by her family. So she was uh, sent on in the family, like given up to different families in, within the family though. Um, but by the time she reached the age of 16, one of the aunts that she was living with at the time um, found out that she likes this one boy. And uh, so she ended up discussing with the boy's mother that why not get Monroe and him married, which the boy obviously found a little bit weird, but he ended up marrying her. This was at the age of 16. She eventually married and she got out on her own and everything. And then she ended up getting into the modeling industry. And from there, her career towards acting hit on. And yeah. So on Sunday, August 5th of 1962, Engelberg signed Monroe's death certificate. But here's something interesting that I found um, while doing the research that Engelberg was actually a member of the Communist Party and this was claimed by three different witnesses 
I don't know why Monroe would be a part of a communist or even like be friends with a communist member. Um, I haven't really done proper research into that because I didn't really get time since obviously I had to do the filming as well. So um, I will do more research and I'll get into it more later. But I just found it really odd that she's friends with a person from the communist party. So yeah, I don't know if that's true or not, but when I find out, I will let you guys know. Anyways, um, so on the day of the death, uh, they discovered that two days before Marilyn died, that Greenson prescribed Marilyn 25 capsules of Phenergan. I don't really know what they're used for. I think one is for anxiety and the other one was for stress or something. And um, it was about 25 mg strength. And uh, he also prescribed her 25 capsules of Nembutal. Monroe was actually trying to get off a specific medicine, which the name is really complicated for me to say, so I'm not even gonna bother saying it. And um, this was according to Greenson that she actually wanted to quit. But according to another, uh, one of the physicians uh, that Monroe was getting a treatment from, he was prescribing her that exact medicine. And uh, what I didn't understand is that if Monroe wanted to get off the medicine, why is the other physician still prescribing her the same medication? Um, obviously she would have talked to this physician too saying that she's trying to get off the medication. So I don't understand why she would still be taking the medication at all. So anyways, continuing on, on August 5th when Dr. Engelberg was questioned, he said that he prescribed a refill of, of uh, Nembutal about two days ago and he had 50 pills in it. But the statement of his was actually false. And the reason for that is because on August 3rd, she was prescribed 25 pills. And she did not get a refill because when you get a new um, prescription bottle, there's a different number written on there. So obviously they knew that it was definitely not a refill. Kat Newcomb, as I was speaking about her, we're going back towards her, um, she said that she was fighting a bad case of bronchitis and she decided to go to the hospital to rest up a little bit. Monroe ended up calling her and uh, she told her to come over and they ended up having a dinner together in a nice quiet restaurant on Friday evening. And then Newcomb said that Monroe was in a wonderful spirit and she was like really happy. She said that Monroe was partly happy because of the decision that the 20th century filming was resuming. So now I'm going to jump in towards August 4th. Okay, so this is on Saturday evening and Greenson had a difference of opinion on the Saturday evening kind of stuff that happened. So on Saturday evening, apparently Monroe called Greenson and said that she wasn't being able to fall asleep and this was around 5.15. And uh, the weird part is that her friend Newcomb, Pat Newcomb, is over at her house. So what I don't understand is that why would Monroe want to go to sleep at 5.15 in the evening, even according to her housekeeper, that was really odd because Monroe doesn't do that kind of stuff. And um, so like at 5.15, apparently she called Dr. Greenson and she was like, I can't fall asleep, so can you come over? But her friend was there too. So I don't know why she would want to go to sleep while her friend's over, but anyways, um, so Newcomb didn't leave the house till around like 6.30 p.m. And um, obviously I don't know if like Greenson ended up coming over or anything because it's not written anywhere within um, Capel's story. Um, so I don't know if he ended up coming over, but if he did, here's the thing, because if he did, um, because obviously according to the police, Monroe died at around 8 p.m. So, and Greenson claims that Monroe's, like the treatment that she gets, lasts at least an hour and a half to two hours long. So if he was there, that means that Monroe died in his arms, basically. So I don't know if he was actually there or not, but if he wasn't, obviously she died while he was present. Um, 
anyways was then obviously she died while he was present um anyways so going back towards what i was saying that um she was state she was actually deceased around 8 p.m um so the police officer that got to the scene before anybody else did um he actually claims his name's Canel. i don't remember his first name but his last name's Canel, and he claims that monroe had deceased by around somewhere between 8 p.m and 12 a.m so here's what i i found um really interesting is that first of all if she died around that time what was the housekeeper doing at all like in her statement uh, according to canal like when he questioned them marie's statements kept changing first of all which i just don't understand why obviously it's a cover-up and i just i don't know what to even say um so when canal questioned her and greenson because they were present at the scene at 4 25 in the morning and that's when he arrived actually at the scene but when he questioned them marie's response was that at 10 p.m when she checked monroe's doors like the doors locked and the lights on and there's like a cord coming out from underneath the door that is connected to the wall and usually um marie says that before monroe sleeps she usually disconnects that wire so that the housekeeper knows that she's asleep but marie said that she was uh her phone line was connected so obviously she thought that monroe's awake and she's on the call with somebody um and then in her second statement she changes it and then she's like i went at midnight check then in her third statement she claims that she went at three in the morning and then she saw that her room's door is still locked the wire cord is still there connected to the wall and that there the light's still on and then she said that she walked around and checked from her uh room's window and she saw that monroe was lying in that very unnatural kind of way and then she ended up calling Greenson. But before she said Greenson, she actually claimed that she called Engelberg. And then she called Greenson because Engelberg told her to call Greenson. So I don't know what the hell she's trying to say here and what the fuck is actually going on, but this is fucked up. Um, anyways, so when she, according to like, Marie's statement Monroe actually ha was lying on her stomach with a phone in her hand but Canal said that when he arrived at the scene it seemed like everything had been erased like literally everything was erased and he said that Monroe was not holding any phone in her hand so I don't know who's telling the truth and who's telling the lie here but if anything the evidence has been tampered with that's what i'm gonna say if the phone was in her hand when marie said that she saw that the phone was in her hand then that means that somebody removed the phone from her hand it could have been greenson could have been marie or it even could have been engelberg none of us know because obviously we weren't present at the scene so no one knows um, anyways, when Canel questioned both Marie and uh, Greenson, like why the police wasn't called right away, both of them actually tried to avoid the question. Neither of them tried to respond to it, and then Greenson eventually stepped forward and he spoke up, and he's like, "Well, because we needed permission from the like, the studio before we could call you. Obviously, that's bullshit." Even Canal says that he's like it's just completely bullshit because you guys don't need permission from like the producers to let us know first like that's fucked up. Anyways, um, then comes the autopsy report, and as everyone has been saying, she overdosed. Well, um, well according to the autopsy report, she didn't overdose. So the autopsy took place at 10:30. 
in the morning on August 5th. And this was performed by, I think, Dr. Noguchi. I don't know if I pronounced that wrong. But he claims that the stomach is almost completely empty. The contents are brownish mucoid fluid, and the volume is estimated to be no more than 20 cc. There's no residue of pills as you can note down. There is like, he literally says that there's no residue of pills within her body. So why did they write that she OD'd in the autopsy report? That's my question. Secondly, here's another question is, Monroe clearly died around 8 p.m. and between 12 a.m. But the coroner's office wrote that she died at 3.40 in the morning. Why? I honestly don't understand why they would do such a thing like that because obviously they're trying to cover up for somebody and this person is very smart for the way that they got away with this murder. Okay, first of all, that's what I'm gonna say is that whoever actually killed her was really, really smart. Obviously, like they had it planned out. They could have been planning for months, even for years. But whoever ha did this had a motive to kill her. But the only thing is, what was the motive? And um, when I was doing the research, as I told you guys about the Red Diary, well, speaking of the Red Diary, um, it's still missing, right? So obviously there was something within that diary that this person did not want to come out and whatever it was in that diary well nobody knows anyways now because if the person has the evidence they obviously would have tried to destroy it somehow because they don't want the uh, anyone to know what happened originally okay anyways um obviously like whoever took the diary first of all they would have destroyed the evidence right away. And if they didn't, well, then they're stupid. Um, but most likely, it's 99% sure that the person that took the diary and stole it, they would have destroyed it because obviously they don't want the information getting out. So, yeah. Anyways, going back to the morning of Monroe's death, basically, that they wrote down as 3.40. Um... Here's something that I found on Marie. So based on uh, several claims, um, when Monroe died, I, I find this very odd, obviously. Um, so when Monroe died, the housekeeper was actually doing laundry. According to the reports that I was reading and like even in the documentary, they said that obviously she was trying to get rid of evidence. Like doing laundry is such a strange time too. And another thing that I found was the housekeeper had been fired for two weeks. On August 4th, the day of Monroe's death, she literally wrote a check to her housekeeper for $200 and she told her to take two weeks off. She literally fired her for two weeks. But the housekeeper stayed at Monroe's house. I don't know what to say there. I'm really confused at this point. Like, so many thoughts are running in my mind at this point. Like, I just don't even know where to start from and where to end. Um, but it's, I found it really odd that Monroe ended up firing her and she ended up staying at the house, you know? Like, why? Obviously, if like, if the housekeeper did do it, which, in my point of view, I feel like she could have done it. And even if she didn't do it, she still lent a helping hand within the murder of Monroe's. So, like, obviously she had the motive to stay there because I don't know why else, like, 
I don't know what else to say. Like, obviously, if anything, she probably had a lot more of a motive to stay there. And um, a lot of people said that the housekeeper actually would have done it because she just started acting like she was Monroe and stuff. Like, according to, like, one of the claims, this person said that she actually started acting like she was living Monroe's life and everything. So, yeah. So here's another thing that came up that was interesting. So while I was going through the documentaries, they said that Murray was probably hired by somebody to keep an eye on Monroe. And they're saying that she was a spy from like the CIA or from like the Kennedys. Again, the Kennedys did come up. They said that the Kennedys obviously had involvement and then one of the one of the things that I was reading was by People, and uh, in this, through the People magazine, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pronounce uh, his name right, but uh, Demagio, I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, I th and uh, he claims that he knows who Monroe's murderer was. And he brought up the Kennedys. Um, so according to DiMaggio, he said that Monroe was obviously killed by the Kennedys. That they had a lot of motive to kill her and everything. I don't know. Like, I can't really even interview the person because he passed away in 1999. But he said that he knew that the Kennedys had a hand in this and um, that they were the ones who killed her or got her killed. I don't know if these uh, statements are even true or not, but if they are, then yeah, the Kennedys had a lot of things to do with it. And um, a lot of the theories that do come up and a lot of the statements that have come up are mostly against the Kennedys and saying that the Kennedys had a, a lot of things to do with her murder. And if that's true, well, then the Kennedys really messed up. If the Kennedys did this, why did they do it? Like, what was their purpose? What was their motive for killing her? What, what did they even get out of it? And uh, why did they steal her diary, you know? So there's a lot of things that I still need to do research on and I really, really, really need to get more information. So until, <laughs> I get more information. I obviously can't really say a lot of things that I want to say because I don't want to end up making up my own theory and just, you know, and all that stuff. So I want to get more information on what actually happened to her. One thing that I couldn't understand is why would Monroe want to kill herself if she was planning on getting remarried to DiMaggio? I really didn't understand that at all. Like she was planning on getting remarried to him and she ends up dead. Plus, like when she ended the phone calls and like when she said bye to her friend, like she literally told them all that she'd see them tomorrow. So like why would she want to commit suicide out of nowhere all of a sudden? It didn't add up to me. And um, I don't know what else to say. So honestly, I'm gonna just leave you guys with that information this time because I really don't have more information. Um, so yeah, I will be doing more research because obviously I didn't get so much time to do research. And um, so I'll be back again with more information this time. But this time I will be seeing you guys in two weeks instead of next week. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys did please give it a thumbs up and make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and let you guys friends know too. So yeah um, I'll be seeing you guys again in two weeks. Bye guys.